here we go, 1.4. What we're going to do in 1.4 is we're going to end up solving for a variable, and the answer is going to have a variable in it. So, for example, our first problem, let's do number two together, which will be on our worksheet. I'm going to move this up a little bit. It's going to say solve for y, and the problem is going to look like this. 8x minus 4y equals negative 12. And then it's going to have a semicolon, and it's going to have x equals negative 3, comma, negative 1, comma, 1. And so it looks really complicated what they want you to do. But the directions are right here. Solve for y. And we're going to kind of ignore this other information until we do the very first thing, which is solving for y. So we kind of ignore this until we do this first part, which is getting the y by itself. If I want to get the y by itself, by the way, this is 8x minus 4y. I don't know why that minus sign came out really in the lower. It's a minus sign right there. Let me... Uh, right, there we go. Better? All right. 8x minus 4y equals negative 12. What I want to do is get this y by itself. The y has a partner of this negative 4. So what I need to get rid of is this 8x, don't I? So because I want to get rid of this 8x, the only way to get rid of a positive 8x is to have a negative 8x over here. Positives and negatives together are the only way to get something to make it equal to 0. But whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. I draw a line like this. And off to the side here, I'm going to write that again. A positive and a negative is what adds to equal zero. It's the only thing that we can do to get variables to cancel out or move to the other side. <clears throat> 8x minus 8x actually makes zero. On this left side, this is a negative 4y. It's by itself. I bring down the equal sign. This negative 12 and this negative 8x are those like terms. <clears throat> so we cannot put them together. So what does that mean? That means we write out negative 8x minus 12 because we can't put them together. We almost have the y by itself. But it's not by itself. There's still a negative 4 next to it. And when there are numbers next to letters, it means it's multiplying. The opposite of multiplying is? And I don't want to just divide by 4. I also want to get rid of that negative. So I'm going to divide by negative 4. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the entire other side. Divide by negative 4. Now, earlier I showed you this makes 1 times y, which is y. And if we divide some whole group by that, that means it's in parentheses. The top is in parentheses. And this divided by negative 4 is the same thing as multiplying this group by this negative one-fourth. And so I'm doing that just to show you that we still can go back to 1.1 and do the distributive property from there. So what I do is I distribute this negative one-fourth to both. If you are not good with fractions, use your calculators for that. Kaden? Um, where'd you get one-fourth from? You know how there's this negative four on bottom? When I move that over this way, the still the 4 is still on bottom. And this group that's right here, that's up there, there is a 1 that's in front of it. So that's where the 1 comes from that's on top. So 
So I, I'm doing that. It's something I showed earlier that we can apply to this problem as well. It's the same thing. Do you know what negative 1 fourth times negative 8x is? If you do as a class, let's say it out loud. What is negative 1 fourth times negative 8x? Say it out loud. Two. Ooh. Two. Okay. Here we go. Let's do this by pieces. I could tell by the answers that we are all over the place. What's a negative times a negative? We're good on that. 8 divided by 4. Do 8 divided by 4 is what? 2. two. 4 goes in there 2 times, and the x is right next to it. We leave it. Positive 2x is what it should be. Let's see if you get the next one. Negative 1 fourth distributed to the other side of the classroom is? Three. Positive or negative? Positive. Got to put the plus sign there. Equals Y. The question asked us to solve for Y. Did we solve for Y? Is the Y by itself? Then this is our answer for the first part of the question. Y equals 2X plus 3. The Y is by itself. That's important because our answer does, isn't made up just of, of numbers. Our answer has numbers and letters involved with it with numbers and variables that's what a literal equation is we are solving for a variable when there are other variables sometimes our answer is going to have a variable in it and you've done this before it's just now we're asking you to do it in, uh, for here okay and now what else is it asking us to do it says when x equals negative 3 what's the y value what they're asking us to do with this stuff right here, I'm going to draw a little box next to it, and I'm going to put an X and a Y, and I'm going to make a little table, and I'm going to put negative 3 for X, negative 1, and then 1. Please do that on your notes paper. This means you're supposed to figure out what Y is, when x is this value, this value, this value. And I'm going to show you two ways to do this. I'm going to show you how to do it by hand, and then I'm going to show you how to do it with the calculator. Okay? So here's how we do it by hand. y equals 2x plus 3. I'm going to write that out real quick. y equals 2x plus 3 right there. And instead of x, I'm going to replace the x with the first number that I see. I'm going to just draw a little arrow. And I'm going to put that in where the x is right there. I'm going to put the negative 3 inside parentheses. And I'm going to put y equals 2. Instead of x, I put parentheses negative 3 plus 3. And there's a little side note here. When we replace the variable with the number, I always use parentheses. When we substitute Thank you. Thanks here. When we substitute numbers for variables use parentheses when we substitute numbers for variables use parentheses <coughs> and so hopefully as we go back here and when I replaced that x with a negative 3, I had to use parentheses. I wasn't subtracting the 3 from 2. It means I actually have to multiply that uh, by 2. Does that make sense? What is 2 times negative 3? Plus 3. What is the y going to be equal to? So when x is negative 3, the y is negative 3. And I can fill in my table. 
This is how we do it by hand. I'll do it one more, a little quicker. Y equals, instead of X, what am I going to plug in for X? Use parentheses. 2 times negative 1 plus 3. And I figure out what that is. 2 times the negative 1 is? And what is y going to be equal to? Agreed. That's how we do it by hand. Remember how I told you we we're going to do this on the calculator as well? I'm going to show you an advanced feature of the calculator. And it's only on the calculators I've recommended, the ones that we have in the room. And there's a way to punch this in using a table on our calculator. So here's the, my calculator. It's in the normal mode. If you press mode, which is this button right here, I can actually go over and press the table function because that's what we're doing. We're using a table. Go ahead and press number seven if you have that out. Go ahead. And it brings up this very weird thing, f of x. It's asking me, what is my function? What do I want to plug in? Go ahead and sign up. Grab the pass. This is what we want to punch in for f of x. Our f of x, our function, is 2x plus 3. So I'm going to punch that in here. 2. And the only way to get to the x button on our calculator, this is the only time a variable can be punched in, is right here where my pin is pointing. It's above the parentheses and it's red. So to get to it, I have to press the alpha key. Little A shows up. And I have to press the X button. And what shows up is a 2X on my calculator. 2X plus 3. There's my function. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is press equals. On the old, the newer calculators, it might ask you, do you want to have a g of x? Leave g of x blank if your calculator asks you for g of x. Just press equals. And this is asking you, what do you want to start your table at? What do I want to start my table at? What's the smallest number I'm starting with? OK. If I have to press negative 3 is what I want to start at, I press equals. You can't see that because it's in the glare. I'll move it over here. What do I want my table to end at? One. Otherwise, it's going to end at 5. So I have to press 1 equals. And then this says, what are you counting by? What's the step? What's the change from this number to this number? What's the step? What's the step from this number to this number? What are you counting by? What am I doing to go from negative 1 to 1? From negative 3 to negative 1. Adding 2, then I put 2 because I'm adding 2 to it. Does that make sense? Step is how much you're going up by. Press equals and guess what? Bam. Negative 3, negative 3. Bam. Negative 1, 1. Bam. 1, 5. Then you can't use the table function unless it's a nice equal increment. You could go by ones and you go from there. But the change should be constant because it's linear. Okay? I'll give you another chance to practice that again on example two. Here's example two, number five. Example two, our second example. Why did I put this in there? Because on worksheets, 1.4, it is like number 5 on the worksheet, right? 6y equals negative 3x plus 12. For the values, x is equal to negative 4, negative 2, and 0. The directions are exactly the same thing as above. Step one says, solve for y. Do I have y solved? Is it y by itself yet? What's next to the y that I need to get rid of? 
Am I going to add the six, subtract the six, divide, div multiply, or divide by six? Divide. divide by six. Divide by six. Now, Caden asked me earlier, he said, where does this six go? And so here's what we do, Caden. I take this top piece and I put it in parentheses, negative 3x plus 12. And what's going to go in front of it, since the 6 is on bottom, the 6 stays on bottom, and there's nothing in front of these parentheses except for an invisible 1. It's going to be a 1 6. Every time that we do this, that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to use the distributive property from 1.1. If you do not know how to do 1 6 times negative 3, you can use your calculator. But to get to it, you actually have to put your mode from the table mode back into the computer mode or computation mode. I think that's what it's called. You have to press number 1 again to get out of the menu we were just in. Fraction 1 6 times negative 3. It will reduce it for you too. Negative one half. But there's a variable, negative one half x. Plus, what is one sixth of 12? Any ideas? Nice try. Close. Yeah, 12. Think of it like this 12 divided by 6. 12 divided by 6 is? Do you have y by itself? Yes. Then you are done with the first part of the question. The second part of the question. X, Y. Negative 4, negative 2, 0. And this... Do you want to do it by hand or do you want to use the calculator? Okay, we'll do it by hand. I'm going to plug in zero first because that's the easiest one. Y equals something times zero is just zero plus two. That's the easiest one to do. And then now I got to plug in negative 4 and negative 2 by hand, which might be a little bit uh, tricky, but let's try it. y equals negative 1 half, negative 2 plus 2, negative times a negative, positive, positive. One. 2 divided by 2 is 1, plus 2 is 3. And if I do this right, there will be a nice smooth pattern here. I, you can pretty much figure out what this is going to be. It's not 17. <laughs> it's going to be 4. Just to review with you, if you wanted to do this on the table function, you press mode, 7. You type in your equation, negative fraction 1 half alpha x plus 2. It goes pretty quick. What do I want to start at? negative 4. What do I want to end at? 0. What's it going up by? 2's. And hopefully this matches up with what we have on our paper. We're going to stop right there.